www.cars.coza Budget insurance. Affordable because you can't afford not to. Hello and welcome to the inside of a BMW iX. I'm super excited to bring this car to the channel. I feel very privileged to have just spent four weeks over the holidays with this car and I'm really hoping that I can do it justice because this is such an interesting vehicle. So here we go, stick around. I'm glad to have you with me for a thorough review, hopefully answering all your questions about this, the new fully electric BMW. So what is it? Well, this is a carbon fiber SUV, a little bit longer than a BMW X5, but a little bit shorter and a little bit wider. And so you have this beautifully large, airy cabin inside. It looks a bit like a concept car, and that's, I think, what I quite like about it. It's been so polarizing. Every time I put it on my social media, people vary between, wow, that looks terrible, and wow, that looks really terrible. And I think it's because it's not great in pictures. I don't think it looks particularly good in images, and hopefully it looks better in our video. But when you see it in real life, it is an incredibly captivating car. It literally stops people in their tracks. I've had people take photos of this car. People wave at me, point at it, get thumbs up. They bump their friends like, look at that. You know, as I sort of drive past, I've had people stop me in parking lots wanting to see the inside. I can guarantee you that the only people who don't like this car are on Twitter. Out in the real world, everyone loves this car. South Africans love this new BMW. So let me take you through what's going on underneath my backside. You've got a very large 111 kilowatt hour battery. Now to put that into perspective, the Audi e-tron S Sportback, which we drove recently on the channel, that has a 96 kilowatt hour battery. So quite a big battery in here. Interestingly though, this car weighs less than the Audi, and that's because it has a full CFRP tub chassis, that stands for carbon fiber reinforced plastic. And interestingly, the factory in America that makes this CFRP for BMWs is powered by a hydroelectric dam. So it's carbon zero. So the carbon fiber is made without burning carbons. It's pretty rad. Motor on the front axle, motor on the back axle, resulting in pretty massive performance figures. Power outputs of 386 kilowatts, nearly 400 kilowatts, 765 newton meters, and that translates into a zero to 100 time of 4.6 seconds, which is 0.1 of a second off that Audi e-tron that I just mentioned. And that Audi has almost a thousand newton meters of torque, but a bit less power. So what you have here is a sort of spaceship, rocket ship, electric luxury SUV thing. It, it kind of just does everything well. It, it really does. This is one of the most luxurious, comfortable, premium drives that I've ever experienced. Let's start up front with these massive grills. Now, the first thing to know is they're not actually grills. It's just solid plastic, really. The BMW badge itself has a trick up its sleeve. That is where you fill the washer fluid. Is it an afterthought? Is it a clever bit of design? I'm not really sure. The paint up front and the grill is apparently self-healing. So if it gets a stone chip, it will repair itself overnight. Forgive me, I'm not going to test that. BMW laser lights, very, very smart over there. 22 inch wheels, 275, 40, 22s, front and back. The panels are actually plastic, listen to that. Easy to repair, cheap to repair, quite dent resistant as well. Also keeps 
the center of gravity lower in the car. Now the Audi had a plug-in port on both sides of the car. This only has one, it's on the other side. And let's come around to the boot. It is electric, obviously. We find that there's a curious extra set of lights over here and you can also see the carbon weave. It's really, really cool. And this will show your indicators. There we go. And some brake lights as well. Under here is all your charging thingies. That's where all of those goes. Quite a lot of space for all of your charging cables, etc. And then interestingly, it comes standard fitment with a tow bar, which is something you have to pay extra for on something like a BMW X5. Two and a half ton tow rating. Now I thought I'd sit in the passenger seat to give you a tour of the driver's seat because one of the big things that stands out about this interior is this curved screen and if we shot it from this side well then you just wouldn't see it really. But let's start with the seats. Now do you remember old Citroens? They had these really wacky seat designs that were extremely extremely comfortable. It was comfort over everything and that's pretty much what BMW have gone for here. And when you first see it you think wow that's a bit weird but it actually really really grows on you and it is particularly comfortable to sit in. The next thing you might notice is this very different steering wheel. It kind of has about 17 different shapes. It looks like a maths problem in your metric geometry paper. But what it does is it forces you to keep your hands sort of here in the correct place. And it's very, very comfortable. And it also allows for a great view of the instrument binnacle. Let me take you through the infotainment system. Now, as I mentioned, a really radical design. It looks as if this was a concept interior, which they showed off at a car show and then just didn't change anything. How cool is that? Manufacturers always tone down their concept cars, but this does look like a concept interior. And if you think about it, if they were going to go so radical with the exterior of the car, they couldn't just put a normal BMW interior in here. It would have looked ridiculous. And so we have this really incredible dashboard. The touchscreen is massive, as you can see, and it's all touch orientated. It's very, very smooth. You can play around with a car, for instance. It actually shows you that the door is open which is pretty cool. These are all your sort of consumption figures over here. Now, if you go into the main menu, this is where there are a lot of things to play with and to see. So for instance, let's start with seat comfort. So this is where you can turn on the massage or the cooling and you can switch between the two seats like that. If we go back into the main menu and we go and we have a look at the charging, this is where you can set your charging time. So for instance, if you live in a country with off-peak charging rates, then you can set it to only start when the off-peak starts, which is quite cool. And you can set your charging target as well. Now, the car recommends, BMW recommends, only charging to 80%. It is better for the health of the battery, but of course you can just crank that up to 100% if, for instance, you're going on a very long trip. What's also nice about the settings in here is you can pre-condition the car. So if you live in a very cold place, you can tell it to warm itself up before you get in. You can also do that from the phone app as well. Now, I wanted to show you one more thing while we're inside here. And if we go down to driving settings, I don't know why they buried this so far in the menu, but anyway, you can turn on, this is where you turn on and off the iconic sounds, which is the fake sound that the car makes while you're driving. It's that sort of when you accelerate and when you decelerate. I'm getting quite good at that. Actually, I've been listening to it for four weeks. I prefer it on, I really do. With it off, it's just, eerily quiet in here. It's, it's too quiet. It actually drives you a little bit crazy. Here is the key. Now, I love the design of it. It really does suit the car, but a bit of a gripe for me. It feels a bit light and a bit plasticky. So no, it doesn't feel special enough for what the rest of the car represents. I think that could have been a bit more hefty. Now, one of my favorite parts about the infotainment system is wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, but also two phones can be Bluetooth connected at the same time. So your passenger and the driver, and then it'll take calls from both phones, and then you can argue over who gets to DJ. That's quite nice. 
Right, down here is your control panel. Now this is actual real wood and the buttons are actually inset into this. It's really, really impressive. You just kind of move around like that. I found that the screen is at the right distance from me to use it as a touch screen. I actually barely use this down here and it's a pity because it's so pretty. Look at this lovely jog wheel. Here's your little volume roller over here. Now to get the car moving, all of your switches are over here. This is your gear knob, this little crystal thing that looks like a necklace you might have bought for your partner or something like that. Start button, foot on the brake and the car will make a warm sound and then just down into drive or B. So drive has the adaptive regeneration which I don't particularly like. B is the one pedal driving. So you just flick it down twice for that and then the handbrake is completely automatic. Two USB-C ports down here with your drinks holders and here's your wireless charging pad. And interestingly, the wireless charging pad has little holes in it and I think that is for ventilation because you know how hot your phone gets when it's charging wirelessly. So that's a really, really nice touch over there. Over on your door, on the driver's and passenger's door, are your seat controls. So they're not on the side of the seat. This is actually how you adjust the seat. It's these beautiful crystals up over here with your memory settings. Must admit that is a Merc design thing, but BMW have done a good job of it. And then one of the coolest aspects of getting in and out of this car is that there is no door handle. It's a button. That's how you open and close the door. It's just a little button over there. Now, interestingly, I think they had to do this for legal reasons. There is actually a door handle, but it's hiding down here somewhere. And maybe perhaps if you get into an accident and the car shuts down or something like that, you can use the manual door handle down here. But overall, just a really stunning interior. It's a wonderful place to drive around in. I've come to absolutely love it over the last four weeks that I've been driving the car. It's, it's a very un BMW like interior in that they've pretty much given away and dropped all the sporty pretensions. There's no sportiness here to talk of. It's just premium luxury motoring. I thought I'd jump into the driver's seat because I want to actually turn the car on. So let's go for it. The car is now on. Watch, I'll rev it for you. Rum. <laughs> Absolutely nothing happened. So let me try and answer all of your questions about this car. Here we go. Start with the big one, range. And the word big is quite important here because this has one of the best ranges available right now in any electric car you can buy. On the WLTP test cycle, 630 k's is the maximum here the absolute absolute maximum now look you're not going to get that in the real world in real world driving but in my experience north of 500 k's is really really achievable and if you think about it a performance suv of this caliber this luxury with this sort of power and speed i don't think you would do 500 k's on it on a tank, you know, you'd, you'd burn through it quite quickly, especially if you were enjoying yourself. So 630K theoretical range. Now to put that into perspective, again, comparing it to that Audi, that has a maximum range of 380. So 380K is to 630. Yeah, yeah, that's quite a big difference. And one of the reasons why this BMW is able to achieve such incredible range figures is because of how efficient it is and of course because of the size of the battery. Now, what manufacturers do is they put in the maximum battery size, in this case 111, but then they hold a little bit back because it's better for the life of the battery. So in this car, your maximum battery size is 111, but you can actually only use 105 kilowatt hours of the battery. Now in the Audi, the maximum size is 96, but you can only use 85 kilowatt hours of the battery. So 105 to 85, it's almost a 20% difference in the battery size. But then it's not just about the size, it's about how you use it. <laughs> and this BMW uses its battery 
very, very well indeed. Now, how you measure consumption in an electric car is kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So in a petrol powered car or diesel powered car, it's how many liters you need to go 100 Ks. In this, it's how many kilowatt hours you need to go 100 Ks. And this is where the BMW smashes the competition out of the park because you'll generally average sort of between 21 and 25 kilowatt hours. And that is a lot more efficient than any of its rivals. I've been basically averaging about 21 on most of my trips. If I've been having a bit of fun, 23, right now 26, and I think that's just because the aircon has been working so, so hard because it is hot. And yes, that is a bit of a downside of electric cars. The heat, the actual ambient temperature around the car affects the battery, the heat or the cold around the car, but also the fact that when it's very, very hot, you're pumping the aircon and that is using some of your electricity. Now your best option is to charge your EV at home. That's obviously the most convenient. But if you're out and about and you need a little bit more range or even if you've got a bit more time and you want to charge the battery full, a great option is to come down to a dealership such as SMG Cape Town where you will find a fast charger which is free to use for BMW owners. So you get a free tank of electricity for your car, which is really, really nice. I actually didn't pay for electricity the whole time I was using this car. So they give you one of these little cards. You come on over to the machine, All right? So that confirms that I am a BMW owner. Wow, it's hard to see the screen in the sun. So you choose your charging over there and then over to the cable. It is a very fat and heavy cable. It's properly heavy duty. That is where the cable goes and because we're DC charging, we open both of those flaps and yeah, that's it. We are getting some electricity. Now, when you lock the car, it locks the charger in place. So no one can come and tamper with your car while it is charging. It's also waterproof, so you can do this in the rain as well. And if we go and look on the inside screen, it'll tell you when the car will be fully charged, at what time the car will be fully charged. So what's it like to drive? I think that as an everyday car, as a Monday to Friday car, it doesn't get better than this. I mean, all of the premium manufacturers, Mercedes, Jaguar, Volvo, BMW, Audi, they all have become very good at making luxury cars, very comfortable, very quiet. If you want, you can go the Rolls-Royce route, for instance, and completely cut out the sound of an internal combustion engine. All of that is entirely possible. So this isn't a completely novel experience, even though it's electric. However, there is something quite special and quite serene about the way this car goes about its business. It's riding on air suspension, which helps a lot. So it's very, very comfortable. It deals with rough roads very, very well indeed. It's smooth. It's a little bit like driving around on a cloud, actually. But the suspension system is intelligent. So it does firm up in the corners and dial out the body roll, which is really, really impressive as well. Obviously, no vibration, no noise coming through from the drivetrain whatsoever. And then the cabin is very, very well insulated. Put it this way, as far as luxury motoring goes, this side of, say, a Rolls-Royce Phantom, it doesn't get much better than this. And then I hear you saying, but, Turo, does it drive like a BMW? And my answer to that is, does it need to? Are you buying this car expecting, say, the experience that you might get in a BMW M4? No, you're not. You're buying a big, comfortable, family, luxury SUV. Does it need to handle like a BMW? I don't think so. However, I do think BMW have managed to get some of their brand character into this car. It's not boring to drive when you get on it in the corners. It's not boring to drive when you want to have a little bit of fun you can sort of throw it around a little bit. I think that's down to the cleverness of the suspension because the reality is that this is an over two and a half ton car. So I wouldn't exactly describe it as chuckable, but I don't think it's boring. And that is pretty impressive. Whee! <laughs> that's ridiculous. <laughs> I think 
I'd love to drag race this against something like an M4 or something. I think zero to 60, there's nothing to touch this thing. The M4 would probably come fetch you towards the end, but holy moly, the way this thing gets off the line is ridiculous. Whew, and I need some aircon. So how much does it cost to run an electric vehicle? And the simple answer is that it's dramatically cheaper than a petrol or diesel powered car. Look, it depends also on which car you're coming from. If you're coming from a five litre V8 supercharged Range Rover that's averaging 16 to the 100, then yes, your saving is going to be a lot larger when you get into an electric car. But let me give you some quick maths. So if you charge this car at home to buy 23 kilowatts worth of electricity from your house at current Cape Town rates, 2 Rand 30 a kilowatt, and 23 times 2 Rand 30, you get to about 53 Rand. So it costs you 53 Rand to travel 100 Ks, basically. Now, let's consider, say, a performance SUV that's maybe averaging 14 liters to the 100. 14 times, for argument's sake, petrol 20 rand a liter and you're at 280 rand to go 100 kilometers so 280 rand in a performance petrol suv down to 53 rand to travel the same distance in this with the same sort of power and torque and acceleration <laughs> acceleration is bad so that's how dramatically cheaper it is to run an electric car. So a full charge in this, if you charge up 105 kilowatts, that's about 230, 240 rands worth of electricity. So what's that? 12 liters of petrol, basically. That's a full charge in this car. And you're going between, I would say, 500 and 600 Ks. Yeah, running costs in electric car, very, very nice, very nice. But for the privilege of all of this and all of this luxury and all of this impressive tech, you are spending quite a bit of money. So you can get a smaller iX with less power and a smaller battery, the 40, for 1.65 million Rand. But this, the top spec iX X-Drive 50 with a big battery costs 2.175 million. But think about it this way. You can easily buy a top end BMW X5 and spec it to 2.2 million. So I actually think the pricing parity is pretty much here for this car. And the thing is BMW completely sold out their first shipment of these iXs. So it does show you that there are South Africans out there who, well, not only have the money, but are willing to try something different. They're walking into a BMW showroom, looking at the X5, looking at the X7 and going, hmm, maybe there's something else. into the back seats and as far as back seats go this is quite an interesting place to be up here on the seat actually built into the back of the seat two usb-c ports per passenger you also get your own aircon back here which you can control so it's independent from the front and the rear passengers get tons of air vents one in each B pillar over here, two over there, and then also down by your feet. So you can really appreciate that Arctic wind that the car is generating. In here, two drinks holders. Quite cool. I like how that pops out. That excites the inner seven-year-old in me. The rear passengers also get the same cool door release that the front passengers get as well. Speakers built into the door. Up here is the mount for the cargo net. You've actually got two different places that you can mount it. And here is a swiveling coat hanger thingy which swivels out of the roof. And as you can see, loads of space back here. For context, this car is a little bit longer than a BMW X5. So there is a bit more room and you can really appreciate the benefits of an electric chassis. Everything is in the floor. This is an all-wheel drive car, but you get this completely flat passenger footwell area over here, which just makes it feel very, very spacious. But the best part, I think, of this car's interior is the massive glass panoramic roof. And I have to find a way to show you this roof's party trick. So take a look at the glass roof now, almost completely opaque, blocking out the sunlight. You cannot see through it. But at the touch of a button, 
<laughs> Look at that. It's actually passing electric current through the glass, which changes it from clear to opaque. I love that. So if you've been reading and watching a bit about electric cars, you'll know about the one pedal driving, the brake energy regeneration that the motors create. So the nice thing in here is you can flick between two different modes. If you go into D, then you get adaptive regeneration. Now I must be honest, I haven't really gotten used to this. It feels like the car sort of has a mind of its own. So all the radars are working all the time and they're sort of working out when would be a good time to apply the regenerative braking. So I don't like that very much. So I've been driving around in B, which is complete one pedal driving. So essentially you hardly use the brakes at all. The force of the regen is really, really strong. The force is strong with this one. Uh, it'll almost stop you going down a hill. It's really, really impressive. And the thing is you get used to it. So you see, okay, red robot coming up ahead. How much regen do I need to stop before I get there? And you come off the accelerator pedal and the car gently comes to a stop. And while you're doing that, you're charging the battery the whole time. And that's pretty much about it. There's no real learning curve when it comes to driving an electric car. Sure, the one pedal thing takes some adjustment, but I promise you five, 10 Ks down the road, you'll be used to it. So how do I summarize my thoughts on this car? Well, it's pretty simple really. This is one of the best cars I've ever driven, full stop. Not just the best EV I've ever driven, this is one of the best cars ever that I've ever had the privilege of driving. It just does everything brilliantly. I find that I actually can't praise it enough when I'm telling people about it. And look, the reality is the BMW are quite late to the game here. I mean, we drove the e-tron, my colleague Ashley drove it in Dubai in 2018, I think. The Tesla Model X has been on sale for about seven years now. So yeah, a little bit behind the curve here, BMW. But I think with this product that they have leapfrogged everyone. This is a better car than the Tesla Model X. It's got more range, it's better built, it's quieter to drive, it's more refined. Sure, you can play asteroids in the Model X. It's impressive in its own way, and I love those doors, but this is a better car overall. And it does pain me a little bit that right now electric cars in South Africa are just play toys for the wealthy. I mean, 2.2 million Rand is a staggering amount of money for most South Africans to spend on a motor vehicle. But if this is as good as electric cars can be, then hopefully they'll just go the way of the cell phone and they'll just get better and cheaper all the time. And I'm really excited for that. I would love to have an electric car as my Monday to Friday car. Yes, on the weekend, I wanna take something loud and silly out for a drive to enjoy myself. But when I'm tired from work and I just wanna go home, I want to go home in comfort in one of these. I don't want to go home in a race car with a stupid clutch and a bloody loud exhaust. Maybe when I was 20, not anymore. <laughs> Give me one of these for the commute. The one thing I have learned though from living with an electric car for four weeks is if you cannot charge your electric car at home, then an electric car is not for you. You've got to have a garage with a plug point in it to charge your electric car. You want to treat it like a cell phone. Get home, plug it in, forget about it, wake up in the morning with a full battery. That's what you need to run an electric car. You can't be out there hunting for chargers all the time. I live in an apartment without a garage and so I couldn't charge it at home and so I learned this lesson over the last four weeks. Let's talk about the design for a minute because it is quite special in its own way. Some people think it's terrible, some people think it's quite brilliant. It's very out there, it's very left field. But consider this, when you remove the character of the car provided by the drivetrain in such that a V8 feels very different to a straight six which feels very different to a turbocharged four cylinder, the problem is that all electric motors feel and sound exactly the same. So you've got no character, you've got nothing to differentiate your car from the competition if all the cars are electric. 
and so you have to go a little bit crazy with the design and I think BMW have absolutely nailed it. This car is basically a large rolling billboard for the brand. It gets so much attention and I do think that the design has actually made it a little bit of an it car right now. I think that in sort of very wealthy circles when you know having the latest and greatest toys is very important and your car means a lot about your status I think having something like this that looks like this completely sets you apart from the crowd and people are definitely willing to pay for that so in terms of the design I think BMW have got it right and polarizing is fine because it gets people chatting as well Right everyone, thank you very, very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this thorough review of the new BMW iX. We have over 550 videos on the channel. Go and check them out. I'm sure you'll find something that you like. And yeah, do us a favor, whack that like and subscribe button. We appreciate it. Join the community of Cars at Coza. Right, cheers. See you on the next one. Be safe. Do you like clothes? I do. This is available right now on our sentimental shop. Just go to Kazakoza forward slash shop or look for the description in the link below. <laughs> See what I did there. Just trying to catch you out. And we've got tons of exclusive merchandise which is designed and made exclusively for our store. I said exclusive twice because it's very exclusive. Also hats. Budget insurance. Affordable, because you can't afford not to. Cars.coza.